I just pulled up to Rounders in San Antonio, Texas. I have heard insane things about this room. The action, the people here, I've heard the one two game is absolutely bonkers. So that's what I'm gonna jump into. It's one two and it's matched the stack up to 75% of the biggest stack. So be in for probably a lot of money because these games run deep, but I'm so excited to get in there and take you guys into Rounders. Let's do this. So we're gonna test the waters here in this 1-3 match the stacks. We are in for 1500 chips. And one of the very first hands I get involved in, I look down at King-10 offsuit in the hijack. There's a $6 straddle, so I raise to $25. The button, the small blind, and the $6 straddler calls, so we're going four ways to a flop of King, Jack, 8, Rainbow. We flop a decent hand here and probably have the best hand a ton of the time, so I bet $25. I don't need to bet too big here, going multi-way. The straddler decides he wants to play for more and he min raises to $50. I contemplate re-raising here, but I'm not sure if that accomplishes much. I'm not quite sure what to make of this bet size, but I'm gonna call and see what develops. The turn is a 10, so now we upgrade to two pair. He bets $75. There are some straights available, although the straights that come in are gut shots, so it'd be very unlikely that he was check min raising a gut shot straight draw on the flop. We are losing to a hand like a set of eights, possibly jacks if he doesn't three bet that one pre-flop. So I make the call and we're heading to a river card, which is the four of spades. At this point, he checks it over to me and I'm still getting my feet wet. This is one of my first hands and my first time at this new card club. So I don't know anything about my opponents. He checks and I think this is a clear slam dunk value bet. I realize now after analyzing the hand that we're really not beat by much except for exactly king jack and of course nutted hands like a set of jacks or eights but any other hand like a straight would be very unlikely because like i said only gut shots improved on the turn and we are beating 10 8 jack 8 jack 10 etc although i don't think jack 10 raises the flop so all that to say i should have gone for value here do as i say not as i did i made a nitty check on the river he shows us jack 8 of spades so we definitely could have got some value on the river but lesson learned and we'll move on to the next hand so in the 1-2 match the stack game, they play double board hold on bomb pots, but in the 1-3 game, they play double board PLO bomb pots. So in this one, we find ourselves in the four card game. So we head to see two boards of 8-8, eight, 5, eight, and 7-9 deuce, and we flop quads. I bet $40 and pick up two colors, so we head to a turn card. I'm not gonna slow down here. I wanna get max value and cooler somebody, so I bet $200, which was pot, and unfortunately, my opponents had nothing to call me with. It's a sad day. They fold when I have quads. In this hand, I look down at the beautiful ace king of diamonds under the gun and I raise to $20. My immediate left calls and the big blind calls were going three ways to a flop of seven, three, deuce with one diamond. Facing two opponents here, we don't necessarily flop range advantage, but we are the only one uncapped in this hand as we were the pre-flop raiser and they flatted so it deducts the chances that they have a premium hand like aces, kings, queens, or jacks. The player to my left is going to have some over cards, maybe some suited aces, and, and a lot of small to middle pocket pairs. We can all have a set of sevens on this board, but the big blind is going to flop a lot of pair plus weird straight draw type hands. With there being a diamond out there, I am incentivized to start barreling with my ace king high, so I bet $45. I plan to size up on pretty much any turn card and start polarizing because we can rep all the over pairs. Luckily, the player to my left folds, and so now I'm not too worried about the big blind. He can have such a wide range here, so I want to put max pressure. The turn is an offsuit 9, so now a lot of his hands, even 7x hands, are going to hate continued aggression from me. He can have gut shots and hands like 5-6, 6-3, 3-4, etc. So we have ace-king high. He probably has this beat with some type of weak pair at this point. So I put out an overbet of $155. He begrudgingly and reluctantly folds and said he folded a pair, so we got the job done and our bet did exactly what we wanted it to do and we pick up the pot. In this hand, we play the biggest pot of the night. I look down in early position at 
pocket aces. There's a button straddle to 10, and the way it works here is unless there's two raises before the button, the button gets to act last. Right as the dealer said there was a $10 button straddle, I was getting ready to put out my raise of 20, so I accidentally min-raised. There was four callers, and then it's back on the button, and now he has the choice between calling, raising, or folding. He chooses to raise to $120. I'm jumping for joy at this point. I hope he has a big hand. I don't know much about him, but he seems like a pretty tight and straightforward player, so I'm hoping he has a monster. There's absolutely no reason to slow play my hand out of position with many players to act after me, so I put in the 4-bet to $400. Folds back around to the button, he makes the call, so now we're going heads up in a huge pot. And in this hand, we're about $2,000 effective. The flop is Jack-7-5 with two hearts. We do have the Ace of Hearts in our hand. I don't love seeing the jack as it seems like he could definitely have pocket jacks in this spot, but if we're getting cooler, then we're getting cooler. The pot is a little over 800, so I down bet to $315. Before I can barely even get all my chips out, he says, I'm all in. I didn't come all this way to fold aces on this jack high flop, so I quickly put in the call. We decide to run it twice, and here's what happened. So on the first board, he catches a king for two pair, which is so heartbreaking. We also have to fade a heart on the second board, and this is a major sweat for a huge $4,000 pot. And thankfully, we end up chopping it up because we lost the first board. So a little bit anticlimactic, but luckily we don't lose our whole stack on this pot when our opponent flops a monster draw. In this hand, there's a $10 button straddle and there's a raise under the gun one to $40. The two players to his left make the call and now it skips the button and it's on me. I look down at pocket kings. I'm not gonna give them a good price facing multiple opponents out of position, so I'm gonna raise to a big size and I make it $180. Unfortunately, I guess no one had a pretty strong hand as they all let it go, but we pick up $100 without seeing a flop. In this hand, the cutoff raise is to $25. I look down at eight six of diamonds on the button and I decide to flat. We go heads up to a flop of absolute gin. It comes four, five, seven with two spades, so we flop the absolute nuts. Unfortunately, our opponent checks. I was hoping he would continue putting money in the pot, obviously. There's a chance he could be checking some overpairs here if he's a more balanced player. However, I'm not sure he is, so he probably just missed and has some ace high type hands. But nevertheless, we're gonna bet and hope that he has a hand to call us with, so I bet $15. I was happy to see he made the call. I noticed in a few hands he was a little bit sticky, but I really don't know how he plays. The turn is another four so this could be a good card to have him continue calling with maybe some ace high or really good ace high type hands. If he has an over pair and decided to take a weird line and check with a hand like pocket tens, nines, eights, well this is a great card for him to continue calling us. So I bet $50. He calls again and the river is a jack of spades so it does bring in the front door flush. He checks yet again. I assume a lot of players would lead in this spot with their flush because they know I'm gonna check it back a ton of the time because it's less likely I have a flush draw. So I'm gonna go for value here. I don't think he has a flush here too often. So I bet $105. He doesn't think very long before putting in the fold. Too bad he didn't have a hand there and we couldn't stack him after flopping the absolute nuts, but hey, a pot one is a pot one. In this hand, I look down at king nine of hearts and the low jack, and it might be a little bit of a loose open, especially at a very call happy table. King nine suited is probably the bottom of my suited king opening range in this spot. It looked pretty at the time, so I opened it. There was a $10 straddle, so I made it $30. The small and big blind call, the button straddle folds, so we go three ways to a flop of 885 with one heart. They check it to me and a lot of people shy away on paired boards. I do have backdoor hearts, I have king high, and I was a preflop raiser. They probably have a lot of hands that miss this flop, so I'm gonna take advantage of that. I don't have to bet big into two opponents, so I go for about a 40% sizing of $35 and they both toss their cards quickly into the muck. 
this hand, I want to know in the comments what you guys would have done. I found myself a bit lost. I think I ended up taking a subpar line in this hand. So under the gun raises to $15. I'm in this small blind and I have eight seven of spades. This is a fold a lot of the time depending on the player type raising under the gun, but it can be a call or a three bet sometimes as well. So I decide to flat this time and we go heads up to a flop of king eight five with two clubs. I'm never leading into the pre-flopped raiser on this board, so I check it. He bets $20, I make the call. The turn is a four, so now our hand does improve just a little bit. We have some more outs with a straight draw. We're still beating a lot of our opponent's range. Hands that he wants to turn into a bluff or semi-bluff. Hands like ace-queen, ace-jack, ace-10, hands like that. He might also start checking back some of his middling pocket pairs. Like, let's say he has tens or jacks or queens in this spot. He's not going to triple barrel with a king out there. Again, I'm never leading in the spot, so I check it over to him. He now bets $35, and I make the call. The river is an interesting card because it's another king. I check once again, I'm never leading, and now my opponent bets $100. I think in a vacuum, I'm just supposed to put in the call. My opponent is repping pretty thin. He's telling me he has ace-king or a king or a full house. I can't imagine he'd want to continue betting when the king pairs if he had a hand like aces, queens, jacks, ten. So this bet doesn't make a ton of sense unless he just has it. And at these stakes and against these types of players, it didn't seem like he was a pro. And usually they just have it a lot of the time. But I still think I probably made a pretty nitty fold. So I did decide to let my hand go. I was a little bit thrown off in the hand and I was sure let me know in the comments what you guys would have done would you have thrown in the call or let this hand go All right, the last hand I have to share with you guys is one of my favorite hands of the night and one of my favorite hands I've ever played and you're about to see why. In this hand, there's a $6 straddle under the gun and I raise pocket tens on the button to $25. The small blind and the straddler call, so we're going three ways to a flop. The flop is jack seven five with two clubs, so we have middle pair on this board. Facing two opponents here with probably some wide ranges, I think I could still see bet and thin the field here. I'm not always beat just because there's a jack on the board, so I do decide to see bet $35. They both call, so we head to a turn card, and the turn is a 10, so we spike a sneaky set here on the turn on a pretty dynamic board against two opponents, and this pot is brewing. Now I'm definitely going to continue betting, and I bet $100. Only the early position straddler calls, and so we head to a river card, which is the king of clubs. I do have the 10 of clubs in my hand, so I do block some flush draw combinations. He leads for a little over pot for $350. This is the same player I played that massive aces versus king jack of hearts hand earlier. I've been seeing him play and I don't think he gets out of line too much and he seems pretty straightforward most of the time. When the flush comes in on the river and your opponent leads into you, it's just so strong. I'm the one in position, so for them to lead out of position is a lot of strength, especially when this card comes in. I have a set, I block clubs, but the problem is I'm still losing to a lot. I'm losing to 8-9 queen nine, ace queen, and any and all flush combinations. So there are a ton of hands that beat me and what hands is he leading into me for over pot on the river with? The old Ashley would just make the call because well, I have a set, but the new Ashley thinks that, well, you know what? I'm beat by a lot and in these fields, players just don't lead with worse than nutted hands and although I have a set, I don't think he's leading here with anything less than a hand that has me beat. So it was very, very hard. I didn't want to be wrong, but you know what, guys? It's okay to be wrong in poker sometimes. And I try to just calculate how many combinations he has of hands that beat me in is quite a bit. Plus, the price I'm getting to call here just isn't great. So I put in the fold, and my opponent said he showed his hand to the player to his right. His name was Dylan. He was fun to play with as well. He said, I saw his hand. He actually had seven, eight of clubs. So a lot more money could have gone into this pot on the flop because he flopped a monster monster draw and ended up getting there on the river. A little bummed that my set couldn't hold up there, but I am so happy and proud of myself for putting in the correct fold and saving some chips. So we were in the game for $1,500 and cashed out with 2017 for a profit of $517 in just a few hours. And if you're wondering what app this is that I use to track my poker stats, I use Poker Analytics. It's a very clean, easy, intuitive app where you can keep it simple and just track your stats or you can go in depth and do all kinds of reports. You can have separate bank rolls, you can do hand histories, and you can take player notes. And if you use another app, you can also import or export data so you can 
can transfer all of your old data over to this one. If you're interested in using it, click the top right link on the screen right now or the link in my description. Give it a try and download it now. How crazy that this was vlog number 50. Wow, we have come so far. This is insane. And you guys, we just hit 25,000 subscribers on YouTube. And because of that, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. So stay tuned, be on the lookout for a giveaway from me to thank all of you YouTube subscribers. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the vlog, would you do me a huge favor and go all in and like, comment, and subscribe? It would mean the world to me. We're just getting started. It's only up from here. I'll see you guys next time.